Hi, my name is Daribor. I run a small business manufacturing Nixie tubes. Currently, we are working on a new Nixie tube model called F. This F Nixie tube should be produced more efficiently, it should be more affordable, and uh, for this, we will need to develop machines that are more productive. One of these machines is called Stem Press, and it will produce stems, which is the food the base of the Nixie tube. The vision is that we'll have a machine that is able to produce hundreds of stems per hour. Uh, it will need to be semi-automated or automated. Uh, there will be a lot of moving parts. It will be quite a complex machine. And uh, to be able to design and build such a machine, uh, because we cannot buy it, that's the point, we cannot buy it because there are no more manufacturers of such things, because this is like an ancient technology. Uh, to be able to design it, I will be, I will need to know the process of the glass forming and all the problems that can appear. So I'm currently building a small setup around the glass blowing light that will help me to press the stands and to gather experience from this process. And once I manage this, once I, I know what's going on, uh, I will start building the machine. Today we will focus on two problems. First of them is that the glass is sticking to the upper mold. And the second problem is that the glass tends to flow from the mold through the edge of the lower mold. In the last video I mentioned the document that came from the RCA Corporation, from the company that produced tubes at some point in the United States. And this document describes the process of glass button stem making and there are plenty of interesting information uh, at the beginning of the document we have materials description and that it, then there is a mechanical setup and one of the paragraphs talks about setting up of lead weight pressures lead is a term for the pins at first it was unclear what the lead weight might be but when you read it it becomes clear that it has something to do with the ejection of the of the glass stem from the mold and uh, this paragraph is important. Another function of the lead weight is the ejection action they impart to the stem when the press starts to raise. To improve this function, springs have been placed behind the lead weights. The springs increase the effectiveness of the lead weights by supplying as much additional force as the original lead weight. So it's some kind of mechanism that helps to eject the stem from the mold. We don't know how the original RCA lead weight mechanism worked, but uh, it could have been something like this. So this is the mechanism I added to our design. Uh, it's a pipe with pins here that slides through the holes for the pins in the lower mold. And the idea is that when the, when the mold goes down to press the glass, it will rest on the pins the glass is formed and then when we move the upper mold up it will rest on the pins keeping them down together with all the glass with everything and just this few millimeter travel distance will be enough for the glass to unstick from the upper mold and then the whole upper setup will move upwards and our stem will stay resting on the on the bottom mold The machining marks helps the glass to stick to the mold, so we need to find a way to get rid of them. I'm using an ultrasonic mold polishing machine with glass fiber stick. 
it's incredibly effective this whole process took me like five minutes also the cast iron is very easy to scrape the result is smooth surface which will be enough it's not mirror smooth but this is not what we need right now the holes for the pins are designed conical and we are reaming it with a conical reamer this should help the glass to be easier extracted from the holes I wanted to use grooved pins, their advantage is that you can just drill a hole with a regular drill bit and you don't have to ream the hole, so this theoretically makes the work faster, uh, but they need really large force to get pressed and you need to have a really rigid press and center them correctly. So this idea didn't work and for the second attempt I ended up reaming the hole with the same conical reamer which made the force you need for the pressing lower. Another change that I made is that I'm using three burners instead of two. I added one more nozzle to get more power of the flame to the glass. The good point is that the ejection mechanism works, but the glass still tends to flow over the edge of the mold. The problem is that we used to tall glass ring here, so there was a lot of glass and it formed a torus that is extending the edge of the glass mold.
the shape of the glass here, the beads, everything looks great. The question is how to get the glass flowing to the center of the stem. For another attempt I'm trying two glass rings. Uh, the outer ring is shorter than in the previous attempts. This should make the glass torus smaller and not extending over the edge of the mold. Uh, the internal one is taller and after melting it, it should fill the stem center with glass. The problem here is that all three nozzles are in one row, so it's difficult to position them so that they melt the outer ring and the internal ring at the same time. So as you can see, I'm overheating the pins, they are melting. The positive thing here is that the glass is not flowing over the edge of the lower mold. That's because we used shorter ring. The torus of the modern glass was smaller and it doesn't tend to go over the edge. It's pressed inwards into the center of the mold. Because in the previous attempt it was difficult to heat up the internal ring, uh, this time I was trying to use two short rings and I hope that somehow the inner ring will get a heat from the molten glass around and that sort of worked. We definitely got the glass closer to the center this time, but still when you look at it uh, the glass is cold inside and the heat doesn't get there. Now let's look at this video that I found on Facebook page of Melts company. This is the company that made the stems for us in the past. And they use here a trick. They use a flanged exhaust tube. This is a way how to get the glass into the center. So they can use just one thick outer ring and no additional rings. They, all the glass to the stem comes just from this outer ring and from the flanged exhaust pipe. They use four burners that heats the glass tank and chili on the sides and two additional burners that heats the center of the stem from the top. So these two burners is something that we are missing right now. Making the flange on the exhaust pipe is an additional step in the process, so this is an additional complication, but for now, because we want to try it, we want to learn it, I made few of them. So here I have two rings and a flanged exhaust pipe and what is not very well visible is that I'm using additional burner, additional nozzle which is pointing towards the center. So here the internal ring melts quite easily but because the inner ring was too tall uh, there's a lot of glass so the, the glass completely covered the the exhaust pipe which is not good also some glass uh, melted and got pushed through the gap between the edges of the mold so it's all over the lower mold This 
there is definitely progress from the last time the outer edge of the stem and the bead starts to resemble the real thing the glass here is formed very well uh, towards the center it's more of a problem the glass tends to stay cool and doesn't doesn't flow well so this will be subject of exploration in the next video i'm really glad that the ejection mechanism worked at the first try as we designed it uh, because this was not something that would be shown on uh, in, in the other videos it's something hidden inside of the of the glass mold setup the problem with the glass sticking to the upper mold is practically gone in the next videos i will focus on heating the central part of the stem i want to make a holder that will take the torch and keep it pointed towards the center Another thing that impacts the, the glass and its temperature is the heat conductivity of the mold. Uh, so I check different metals. Right now we use cast iron and I found that if we use stainless steel, we will get roughly three or four times lower heat conductivity. So maybe if we use stainless steel, the heat will not be taken away so fast as in the case of cast, cast iron and we will be able to keep the glass plastic and flowing for longer time. So this is something that I want to try for the next video.